Hello, my name is Erin Hart, and I'm from northern New Jersey, and I'm currently a freshman here in Miami. In this presentation, I'm going to explain what I've learned about the process of design by going through a few projects I've done. Design is a complicated field. As a designer, you have to apply multiple different intelligences to the three different categories of design. That's design thinking, knowledge, and skills. Throughout the presentation, I'm going to apply and explain these concepts in relationship to my projects. The first project is the expressive type project. For this, I had to select three words and alter the type to make it convey the meaning of the word. The use of typography and different typefaces was limited because I was restricted to only using the Arial font, so I had to use my creative thinking to come up with ways to arrange the letters to express their actions. The first word I chose was break. To make the visual rhetoric convey the action of breaking, I cut the word in half to make it appear as if the A and K are hanging. I added the word break multiple times in smaller fonts around the area that's being broken to express stress marks or pieces that are frayed off. The second word I chose is climb. I arranged the letters to appear as if they're physically climbing the boundaries of the frame. The last word is frown. These letters are arched to recreate the formation your mouth makes when someone frowns. The biggest challenge of this project was coming up with a design that was out of the box but still stayed within the restrictions of the project. For the next project, I had a lot more freedom. This project asked me to find a problem that I can solve with design. Problem solving is a major part of design because most of the time designers are hired to create something to fix a problem. By applying their analytical intelligence to come up with a logical solution with well-informed decisions. Designers also apply practical intelligence by coming up with an idea that can be reasonably implemented. The problem I chose to analyze is how during critiques, artist projects are damaged by the pushpins used to hang them, as shown in the first image. These small holes may not seem like a big deal, but these subtle imperfections reduce the presentation quality of the piece. Another issue with the current system is where the pins are stored. When coming up with a solution to the problem, I had to take a human-centered approach by considering who the problem is affecting and how to create a solution that is directed towards them. In my class, I noticed a majority of the students couldn't reach or see into the box the pins were held in because it was hung too high on the wall, restricting them from safely picking up the pins. My solution is to replace the current board with a magnetic board so the artists can use magnets to hang their work and it won't puncture it. The board would also have a designated area to place the magnets when not in use, making them easily accessible to all students of all heights. One issue that may arise with this solution is hanging projects that are too thick for magnets to work through. To solve this problem, I proposed the design of a magnet that has an extendable arm that can stretch out and hook around the project compressing it to the wall. The last project is the button icon project. The first step was to create a mind map, which is a commonly used problem solving tool. Because it allows designers to quickly jot down their ideas in the ideation phase of the design process. But for this project, it was used to analyze aspects of my life. Starting with my name, I branched off into separate categories and maintained organization by using the hierarchical scale by making the section titles larger to create emphasis. For the next step, I reviewed my mind map and chose three categories that were the most significant in my life. This is the iteration phase where I had to apply my creative intelligence to repeatedly come up with quick, innovative, and engaging designs. The three categories I chose were family, concussions, and travel. Once I completed my quick sketches, I moved on to the second part of the iteration phase by selecting the images that can most successfully convey the topic's visual rhetoric in a form of an icon. Icons are supposed to be easily understood by the general public, 
so I referenced my social and analytical intelligence to analyze how people interpret certain images and to pick images that have an internationally understood message, leading to these concepts. The family with the rings and the binky, the brain with a bruised part to express concussion, and a globe with pins to express travel. Next, I had to bring my black and white sketches to life. I decided to create my icons in Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator is the program that made me want to become a designer in the first place. When I started using this program, I was amazed by the ability to create two-dimensional images that appear to be three-dimensional. I would like to work in a design field that mainly uses Illustrator, like logo or package design. In this image, you can see the different steps I took to create the family icon and how I continually edited the design. One piece of design knowledge I have learned is how design is a process of trial and error because as a designer, your skills are constantly improving as you learn from your mistakes and other designers. I went through this process of trial and error for all three icons to come up with these final designs. Using gradients, color, and shadows to create a simple but dimensional icon. The final step of this project was to make our icons into buttons, which was a very fun, creative process. I was so proud of my pins, I put them straight on my backpack. Thank you for viewing my presentation. I hope my project displays the design skills I have learned from these past two semesters, and I cannot wait to develop them even more with the semesters to come.